Funding for the Art Show was made possible by Montgomery County Arts and Cultural District, the Virginia W. Kettering Foundation, proud supporter of the arts in our community, and viewers like you. Thank you. In this edition of the Art Show, how something is made is just as important as what's being made. Money and its relationship to art. The art of paper takes center stage. And an introduction to folkability. It's all ahead on this edition of The Art Show. Hello, I'm Rodney Veal and welcome to The Art Show, where each week we showcase local, regional, and national artists and arts organizations. Two friends in Yellow Springs strive to minimize waste and environmental impact in their craft and lifestyle. In order to do that, they developed alternate power sources for handmaking their wooden eyeglasses. And they get some exercise doing it. My partner Dave started Featherwood Frames maybe five years ago. My glasses broke and I thought I'd try and fix them myself and they turned out pretty well and it kind of turned into a business. I was really into his glasses and joined him, started working. I was doing woodworking and general carpentry at the time and was pretty burnt out with that. I was using scrap wood, wood that normally would be discarded or too small for most people. And Brett's help allowed me to further make the pedal power machines or the bike power machines. The big attraction, more than eyeglasses or anything, was uh, the process, the ethics surrounding it. I was really into that idea. Before I got into this stuff, I was working with sustainable agriculture and it just seemed like a, a great fit. I think sustainability is, you know, a huge issue. We live our lives in a certain way. I haven't had a license in seven years, for example, and I live in a camper. So it'd be weird to come to work and not practice what we preach in that sense. In the winter we use a wood stove and in the summer we crank open the windows as best we can and we collect the rain in rain barrels and we don't have running water out here so we use that for watering our garden or filtering it to drink or using it to steam bend the wood. Not ready to eat those, Dave. I really enjoy mechanics and making like kinetic art so incorporating that with the woodworking and making glasses was a perfect marriage of the two. I've been interested in technologies that bring people together rather than alienate them and separate them from other people. To use our bike powered tools requires Brett and I to be here together and one person's pedaling the other person's using the tool which in some sense is really inefficient because we have to coordinate our schedules to be together but in another sense, it's fostered a great friendship between the two of us. We steam bend and glue to make plywood, and then through various stages, we cut sunglass frames and eyeglass frames on pedal-powered machines. We have a giant exercise bike with a 90-pound flywheel, and one of us gets on it and pedals like crazy and the other one operates the tool. There's no electricity involved, it's just direct drive power. The first time we tried the machine, I was pedaling and I did it and I thought I was gonna pass out. I was so tired, I didn't realize how out of shape I was, I guess. 
and I got like really down, like, man, what am I doing making, trying to make a business around this Herculean feat? But then the next time it was a lot easier, and now it's a, so much easier, and it's healthier, and I feel healthier as well. We still use some electricity with other machines, but the goal is to use as little as possible with the idea of having a model of sustainable production methods. That's really the heart of our business more than anything. I've had so many countless people say, you should just get a CNC machine. Those are so much faster. And once you like figure out the investment, you can make it work out and like make hundreds of glasses a month. And I usually just like nod and like, yeah, I could do that. But you know, it's a kind of a different paradigm and what we're trying to work within. I mean, I've been surprised that we've been able to make glasses as long as we have, because the goal isn't to make like a thousand glasses or ten thousand glasses and retire off of money from glasses. The goal is to just continue making art, continue, continue doing it in the unique way that we are, and that affords us opportunities to not only make glasses, but to work on other projects using scrap or otherwise discarded wood and bike-powered machines. It's definitely developed us as glasses makers, but as individuals and as artists as well that want to live as low impact life as possible. Some people will outright just, you know, say that it's impossible to run a business like that. And they might be right. I think our art here is in how we are trying to do things. You can sculpt and sand a piece of wood forever and make it look beautiful, but that's not really our intention necessarily. Um, but if we can make these tools that can inspire other people to do similar things, then I would consider that an art. I just believe for whatever reason, maybe based on faith or maybe based on just how I view the world, that living in a way that doesn't steal resources from other people or from generations down the line. You'll be happier individually and it's just better. Check out the Art Show page at thinktv.org for a link to Featherwood Frames and order a pair for yourself. The Columbus Museum of Art addresses the complex nature of money and its relationship to art. And Blank We Trust focuses on work made since the 2008 financial crisis. If there's one thing that we know about art is that it's expensive. And I think a lot of people come to the museum with the idea that what they see is valuable in a sense of monetary value. And I wanted to make an exhibition that sort of got in the way of that by exhibiting works that are about money and value itself. Trust is really at the bottom of money and art too. I think we need trust in order to really fully engage a work of art. But money is a very strange thing because on the one hand, it can take a physical form of a banknote, but on the other, that banknote has no intrinsic value. There is no, you know, no, nothing natural about the value of a $5 bill. Uh, what money really is, is a piece of conceptual art, you could say. It's an idea and it's something that collectively we sort of understand what it is, it's, it, that it has this functionality in our society, and we can only accept money from somebody with the, the confidence, the trust, the faith, that we can pass that on and it's going to hold value as that money sort of flows through you to somebody else and out into the economy and it comes back around to you, hopefully. Well. There is an, a work in the show by Paul Ramirez Jonas that is like a souvenir penny machine. You put a penny in there and it, as with any souvenir penny machine you find at any local attraction, it, it squashes your penny into an oval shape. And it says, we trust on it. Well, we trust is the you know, 
underlines that social contract at the heart of money. If you flip it, the trust, though, the word trust is upside down. And so if you have to turn it around to read it. And when you turn it around, it reads, trust me. Uh, so this is a work from 2008. It's called We Make Change. It's uh, 2008 is an election year in which change became a major political slogan. And any politician has, has that message, of, trust me. There's an, another work uh, by Mark Wagner, who is uh, based in Brooklyn. And this is an extraordinary collage uh, of a, a number of panels that contain, it's, well, it's an image of the Statue of Liberty with a lot of fanciful additions to it, let's say. And a lot of cultural references to King Kong, to Goya, to Bruegel, other painters of the past, but um, also some contemporary popular culture. And this collage is made from 81,895 pieces that are cut from 1,121 $1 bills. So on the artist's website, you can go and uh, contribute to the Crispy Bill Fund. And uh, with these bills, he dissects them in an extraordinarily meticulous way and composes them into uh, this really wonderful image. The response to this show, I'm happy to say, has been wonderful. It's really gratifying um, when you talk to visitors or just listen in on what visitors are saying and you really get the feeling they, that they've, they've got it, that they are starting to question what money is in itself, it's, that it's, and also look at you know, the value of artworks. There's a number of, of works in the show that are about the value of themselves. If you haven't visited the Columbus Museum of Art, take a day trip and check it out. It's free admission on Sundays. Visit thinktv.org and click the art show for details. My name is Liz Donaldson and I am a retired art teacher who has been enjoying the last year of my retirement as a painter. Um, I have really fallen in love with oil paints over the years and at the moment I've been creating landscapes that are um, ethereal and a bit surrealistic and almost abstract in places. I find it very relaxing and a way to escape. We want to introduce as many local artists to the community as we can. So email us a short video like the one you just saw and maybe we'll give you a quick shout out. It doesn't have to be professional. Just make sure you show us your studio and some examples of your work. For most artists, paper may not be the canvas of choice, but for artist Christine Weigand, it couldn't be more important. Paper is the media she works with to produce portraits and landscapes that look like fine paintings. Take a look. I like to make it realistic to, to show that, you know, paper is different. This all started with um, a gift to my in-laws for Christmas. I decided um, to do a scrapbook for them and I, I started cutting out, out pictures, you know, designing each year and I was using the clip art pictures from the computer. So I would cut each piece out with using, I think I just bought some random cardstock at the store and, I, and they're very simplified, you know, very basic, but it just started layering it. and that's. I went from there and I thought, oh, maybe I could do this with one of my own photographs, and I, I just started experimenting. After I take a photograph, I use a program called Photoshop, and I'll simplify the lines. I'll look at it, I'll do the composition, I crop it, and then I will do simplify the lines, and then I print it out so that I can use that printout as like a stencil. It is a lot more difficult than just cutting paper. 
you are um, trying to figure out, you know, what's going to be on. You're working in three dimensional. You know, you're always working as to where is this layer going to be in relationship to this other layer because they all have to line up. They all have to, you know, go down nice and easily. You can't have this layer. And then when you're ready to put on this other layer, they, they can't be uneven underneath. So you're always working, you're working three dimensionally. You're working to try to figure out, okay, you're not just, you know, you're not just painting a picture. You are, you're like building a picture that you really have to think about where everything is going to line up to and how it's going, you know, how it's going to look so that the background is behind and, and you know, the pictures in the foreground. Now, when you get towards the end and you're doing the details, that's more just cutting and putting, you know, the details, but that's what makes it pop. There's tons of pieces. I couldn't even count them. I mean, when you start, obviously the first layer is going to be like basically a one piece of paper. And then as you get up, you get to this, um, as you work up, you get to the small pieces. And there are tiny pieces. I mean, they are just like little tiny that I need to use my X-Acto knife blade to like move it over because you just can't pick them up. But for some reason, you need those little pieces. I mean, people, you know, look at it and say, but it, it's amazing how just one little tiny piece transforms the picture. The depth in the piece of my work is just, it, it's a lot with the layering. That gives you a little bit of a three dimension to it. And um, with the shadowing, to achieve the shadowing, I do use um, the different shades of the color. And like the grays, I have the different shades that are all set up with the cardstock that I use. So I start with, when I do the picture, it's usually the dark colors that are on the bottom. And I build up to the light colors, which are almost like, you know, the highlights, the, the, the whites are gonna, you know, just touch of white to bring out the highlights of it, where the darks and the shadows are gonna be underneath. They're gonna be the, the behind the, you know, the, the first layer. My, my colors are what they are. I can't like mix them and make, oh, I need this gray a little bit lighter or anything. I, I can't do that. It's, you know, I, I work with my paper. I, all, the, all my picture is all paper. It's not, no paint. Because you don't have, you know, all that range and you have to use what you have. And um, that's why I guess when I say I, I try to keep the, the palette neutral, like the grays or the browns when I'm doing like the architecture, the browns work really well with buildings. And then you just add that little bit of color just to bring some interest to it. I think my pieces are more just traditional. I mean, I think with the paper, it just lends it to be just like a, a traditional form. They're not, you know, they, they are what the photograph lends them to be. I do like bringing in nature, and I like the animals and the architecture and stuff like that. But I think they're just more, you know, more of a traditional picture. The most difficult part for my for the art, um, I think, is finding the time to do it, to, to be able to sit and, you know, take the time and put it together to sit and do it. We receive quite a few emails each week, so keep contacting us with your story ideas. Let us know what sets you apart from other artists. Send an email to the art show at thinktv.org. Include contact information and links to performances or art samples online. Hi, I'm Sam, and I'm a glass artist. Before you start cutting your glass, pick up your cutter and make sure you have oil in the reservoir, which will come down to this wheel to lubricate it to make sure you get a smooth cut. Finally tonight, we get an exclusive look at the life of musician Ancy McLean. Combining folk sounds with a little bit of country and a little bit of rock and roll, Ancy McLean strives to tell his life stories and entertain his audiences with upbeat, positive music and lyrics. I developed this Ancy McLean character uh, years ago to sort of create a happy-go-lucky, positive energy guy with a band. And so he has this band around him of, 
of guys from the neighborhood, from the trailer park, that are enjoying life. They, uh, they play all these different instruments, and it's just this hodgepodge of, of uh, musical genres. We call the style of music we play folkabilly because it's it's uh, storytelling and uh, often humorous, um, self-deprecating uh, stories about uh, about my foibles in life. And then um, we set it to music. No one knows when midlife's coming. For some it's forty, for some it's nine. If you think about it too long, it's mine, no man. Where's a midway point to the end of the line? I am fortunate to play with some very good guys. They're excellent musicians, but they're also very decent people, and that makes a big difference. My solo gigs, I work really hard. I mean, I'm, I'm really, I have to be the band, you know? So it's like there's no, uh, uh, nobody can tell a joke for me while I'm tuning my guitar, you know? I have to do all of this while um, entertaining an audience, you know? Don't mean to be gross or seem uncouth, I'm just another songwriter in search of the truth. And there's a lot of false stuff out there, a lot of myth and superstition. Yeah, we think it's cool when we hear them yakking. The Moon River was written on a cocktail knacking, but I'm here to tell you it was in between some bathroom stalls. They're not going to tell you, but it's a word on the streets. There's a lot of lyrics written on toilet paper sheets, but you'll never see that hanging up on the Smithsonian's walls. You gotta go with the flow, you gotta roll when it hits, you gotta take it nice and slow, no matter how life hits. And I know you thought I was gonna say a word that rhymes with hits, but I'm not. Ain't gonna do it. This is PBS. This ain't going to air on PBS anyway. Who am I fooling? The solo show that I've been doing is, is evolving. It's, it's changing every time I do it. I think that's a good thing. I think that's what's meant to happen. What I've been doing is I have a box. I have a cardboard box that I've moved around the last 10 moves. And it always moves with us. And I'll, get, I'll open it and get stuff out and look at it on occasion. And it came to me last year, I, thought, well, I should get a box like this and, and take this on the road and let those objects that I pull out and talk about, let that spark a song. And I have so many songs that will go with the objects in this box and other boxes that I have at home, it just keepsakes. I remember driving dad's old Chevrolet, DJ riding shotgun all the way. Whitehall strip most every Friday night. The radio playing the soundtrack to my life. The songs that I sing are positive messages that we can all use. Life is short, enjoy your friends, enjoy your family, because it's short and it's getting shorter all the time. We follow the stars and the record charts, connecting every song we love to a special place in time. Did you miss an episode of The Art Show? No problem. You can watch it on demand at thinktv.org. You'll find all of the previous episodes, as well as current episodes and links to the artists we feature. And that wraps it up for this edition of The Art Show. Until next time, I'm Rodney Veal, and thanks for watching.
Funding for the art show was made possible by Montgomery County Arts and Cultural District, the Virginia W. Kettering Foundation, proud supporter of the arts in our community, Ohio Arts Council, Ohio Humanities Council, and viewers like you. Thank you.